In our last lesson, we talked about patterns, accents, bumps, and holes. Another core formal principle, also basic to harmony, is the notion of satisfactory flow in the musical line or lines. To better understand this idea, we can refer to Albert Bregman's fascinating book, Auditory Scene Analysis. One of the questions Bregman addresses is the following. Given the fact that our environment often contains more than one thing happening at a time, how do we distinguish one sound source from another? For example, we might be chatting with a friend while an airplane flies by and a neighbor's baby is crying. How exactly do we manage to sort out all these sounds occurring at the same time in order to focus on the one in the foreground, what the friend is saying? Bregman's answer involves various criteria the human brain uses to attribute sound streams to their respective sources. One of them is closeness of register. Others include timbre and rhythmic consistency. Since the Western musical tradition is polyphonic, these mental heuristics are often very relevant to harmony, counterpoint, and orchestration. A very powerful tool for creating satisfactory flow in music is voice leading. This is a term everybody's heard, but it's worth examining in depth. When we say voice leading, we mean quite literally how one note in a line leads to the next. All other things being equal, small intervals between successive notes tend to make the lines sound like they're coming from the same source. Of course, leaps are sometimes necessary in various situations that we'll explore later in the course. But conjunct movement is a very powerful way to maintain a sense of satisfactory flow. Even when melodic lines leap around a lot, as they often do in Bach, we tend to perceive them as compound lines. That is to say, lines which are really suggesting two or more levels, each consistent and mostly conjunct in its own register. Some people call this compound melody. The melody in the top staff here is an example. The lower staff is a reduction of the same music so we can see the voice leading layers more clearly. Notice how in this constantly leaping line the high F in the first bar seems to connect up with the high E later in the bar and then with the D and the C in the second bar. Then the high G in the second bar seems to move on to F at the start of the third bar and then to E at the end of the phrase. Similarly, the lower notes in the first bar of the melody form a simple line moving from A to G in the first bar, then to F and E in the second bar. And the low C at the end of the first bar moves to the D and then to the E in the second bar. This is why we'll pay so much attention to smooth voice leading here. Without Korean voice leading, you have just isolated harmonic blocks, not lines. The music bumps along in seemingly arbitrary ways instead of leading the listener in a convincing fashion. Satisfactory flow does not always mean that everything is smooth and eventful. How do we keep the listener's attention while maintaining the convincing flow in the music? A useful formal principle here is the idea of progression. In this course, the word progression will have two meanings. First, there is a common use of the term to mean the directed movement from one chord to another. That is to say, a harmonic progression. And when we speak of a formal progression, we're talking about something else. Formal progression refers to some aspect of the music that increases or decreases incrementally over time. For example, in a melodic phrase, successive local beats might get progressively higher or lower, or the harmony might get more or less dissonant, or modulations might move to more and more distant keys. Here's an example. Notice the gradual rise in the highest notes of the line, D, E, G, A. This progression gives the line a sense of direction. Notice also they don't all arrive in exactly the same way. Combining clear overall direction with some fantasy in the details is an excellent way to engage the listener. They'll perceive a pattern, but can't predict it with 100% accuracy. This kind of formal progression is an important key to development. Music should not just stay on the same level of intensity, but rather needs to evolve in some fairly salient way in a clear direction. Clearly evolving patterns help create a sense of overall momentum, keeping the listener involved. This notion is crucial in larger spans of music, but even within one phrase it can make the difference between monotony and an absorbing experience for the listener. From the performer's point of view, Nadia Boulanger, when coaching, talked about la grande ligne the large line holding the work together. The performer has to maintain an overall balance of tension and relaxation, 
keeping each section in appropriate proportion to the whole, while always maintaining a certain momentum, a sense of progression within the work as a whole. A clear appreciation of the meaning and importance of harmonic details it is an essential part of this skill. Let's listen again to the two versions of an example from our last lesson, where we discussed where in the form things can occur. We concluded that the reason the second version of the example sounds better than the first is that the change in pattern reinforces the cadence, the punctuation. Let's talk about punctuation. Our short-term memory is limited to just a few seconds. We can't make sense of extremely long sequences of events without some kind of punctuation. Think of a run-on sentence. Punctuation allows us to break the whole into parts, making larger units much easier to grasp. Gestalt psychology offers many insights into the way we gather events into larger groups. A relevant book here is A Generative Theory of Tonal Music by Laird Allen Jackendorf. Here the authors apply some of the principles of Gestalt psychology to musical grouping. Like language, music has many degrees of punctuation. This creates hierarchy. Mild punctuation can be local, while stronger punctuation can be used to frame multiple groups of events. This kind of hierarchy is crucial in structuring larger musical forms so the listener can grasp what's happening overall. We'll go into more details about this when we discuss cadences, but for now, the main thing to grasp is that subtle control of punctuation is another essential tool for a composer, and in any style. Arbitrary, unprepared punctuation creates bumps in the form. Lack of punctuation leads to oral fatigue. For a performer, correctly judging various degrees of punctuation helps to let the music breathe making it easier for the audience to make sense of what's happening without losing the forward momentum of the music. For theorists, comparing degrees of punctuation in various styles of music is a fertile field for study. So, to sum up our basic principles, patterns, accents, bumps and holes, voice leading, and punctuation. The student should now start looking for examples of these core principles and musical examples from the repertoire. As we return to them while focusing on specific harmonic situations, the student will find that they are everywhere in evidence. Mm -hmm.